Yo, JD here, Tyrrell Limus, and we are back on F1 2019. There's been quite a lot of F1 2020 content recently, but we are back with some league racing, and this is at TSRL Round 10 at Spa in Belgium. And you'll be able to see by this championship table, and firstly, by the look of the screen, it got rain for this whole session, but you can see my last couple of results, the Silverstone and Germany... I feel I've lost quite a lot of points there uh, through, I think, mostly being quite unlucky. You could argue Silverstone mainly uh, down to strategy. Could have done a few things different, but overall, I don't think I really could have done much more in that race when I think it was looking like a pretty certain top two. It may be even a win because my teammate had a five-second penalty. And then Germany, uh, we were in second place with Jam Pancakes having a time penalty ahead of me. So I'm pretty sure that could have been... I think at worst would have been a podium round there. So I feel we've lost a lot of points. And you can see by that points table that ERL Viper actually managed to win both of those races as well. And that has really, really catapulted him quite high up in this championship. And I really, really respect him. I know he's a fantastic player. He's also in the controller like Jam Pancakes. And no, he's a, a really, really good talent. So he's on a very good momentum right now. Well, I felt I should have probably beaten him in those two races. Um, but that's how it goes sometimes. We are in a full qualifying format. If you're new to these style of videos in this league, it's a full qualifying format. So doing what I normally do, I just get through a Q1 at relatively unscathed. You can see it's a full wet qualifying, which I mentioned at the start of this video. Full wet qualifying for the whole 60 minutes. And this is my fastest lap that I did in Q2, which ended up being... My fastest lap overall out of all the sessions and as always I had done pretty much for each race this season. I really come in prepared for every single race, uh, both dry and wet conditions and Spa, I would say it's a track that quite surprisingly I, I don't really enjoy. I used to enjoy it on previous games like F1 2012, 13. Um, but I really haven't enjoyed it since then. It feels really uh, just very, very hard to drive. And I think in the wet, uh, for me personally, it's probably one of the hardest tracks um, for myself to learn. I, I found it very, very difficult. And you know, the lap times I'm doing here is about two seconds faster than I did after about 30 minutes of practice in the wet. I really had to grind myself. And I'm so, so happy uh, that I prepared because I could have been absolutely nowhere here. But the pace is actually um, very, very good. And the, the controller, um, which a lot of debate has been going on about recently, uh, quite a lot for F1 2020, I even did a video on this today, is renowned to be very, very good in these conditions due to its stability, uh, braking and traction, which uh, Viper and jam pancakes are but my teammate is currently top at the moment again a driver who's been really really impressing me which is quite annoying because we have to fight for pitch strategy quite a lot but you know he's very very quick but myself i've done a purple middle sector that could have been a little bit better in sector one and a few corners but coming across the line we just make sure we get through into q3 because these tires are pretty durable you don't really lose any lap time here and so far uh, we're doing the business we're doing everything we need to do and that is a good psychological boost going into q3 and the start of my q3 did a pretty decent ish first up i think that's a 57.2 but ero viper my main championship rival now is putting in some very very good laps himself and this is the start i think of my last lap and um, that i did here and you can see making a little mistake well not a mistake but just losing the traction it's just so so hard on this track to just find the limit is if you're just a little bit too aggressive but the throttles we almost lose it going through El Rouge at the top there it's an absolute nightmare and you can see close to almost two temps down going into the first sector but towards the end of the lap we do a purple middle sector we actually made up the time as well so it could have been another 56 and maybe have even challenged for pole I think pole would have been a little bit too far away but it puts us provisionally in P3 but everyone else, bad, but no, I've mentioned this quite a few times as well, everyone else in this league seems to be getting better and better each week. And that only puts us P5 with my yeah, main rival quick, first. So no, no, no. that is not ideal for me. But 
like always, I was very, very confident in my race pace. And my race pace, I, I think, to be fair, recently, my last few races, I've been driving probably the best I've done in this game. I feel I've, no, I've driven almost perfect races. Now, my last three races now, I think arguably could have taken the win there. But now we've got to focus on this. We've got five lights here waiting for him to go out in P5. And we get a very good start. Chandler is actually elected to start on the medium tyre. So we go down the inside of two cars going into turn one. Trying not to make a little bit of contact. Make a bit of contact. But I try and leave as much room as I can on the outside here. And we go into P4. So that's one position gained. And now we're behind the Alfa Romeo of Chandler with Viper and my teammate out in front. And it is crucial that I get past him now. I have to overtake him if I do not overtake him then it runs the risk of me not getting in the DRS we go for the move and thankfully he does not defend this he makes it pretty easy for me to overtake which I think after the race he regretted but that is a crucial move and we gain two positions after normally I'm quite cautious in races I'm always trying to play the long game being a conservative not to get damaged or anything at all but I had to be aggressive in that scenario because if I got stuck behind the medium runner, you now it's so hard to catch up on this track as well. It was absolutely crucial. But going towards the end of lap two, I'm just about almost in a DRS zone, but Viper makes a mistake and that brings me straight back into play. So again, that is something I really needed because if I didn't get in the DRS zone on this game, you can effectively just use each other as a slipstream tool to pull away from the car behind. But we do get one warning already, which... This track is actually you know, its quite difficult to get a penalty around this track. So one warning is definitely not something uh, you need around here. You really, really don't want that on your mind. But you can see we're easily within the DRS zone. Pulled away quite away from the guy in P4, Chandler, who's still on those medium tyres. So he could be a factor, actually, towards the end of the race. And you can see Viper switch positions with my teammate. And again, we're going to have to fight for pit position because I think Rain is actually scheduled for the end of this race pretty much an exact forecast like we have for Silverstone where in the last two or three laps there should be rain so it is critical that I need to be ahead of him I had to be ahead of him and I was really thinking of this uh, quite a lot of the time here and at this stage in the race you know, my main thing is really just to stay in the DRS zone to try and save as much fuel and ERS as possible which I know many of you guys say I, I definitely do that too much and I probably say the same things every single video and it probably looks like I'm stream that I'm not really close and I'm struggling but my mindset right now is just to look after the car as much as I can um, because I was really planning uh, to do an undercut or if I had to attack at the end of the race that's when I want to be using it so I'm looking at my strategy here and I decided to press the pit box because normally I go for the overcut and I knew now that I was really confident in my race pace I thought I'm going to have to take a risk. Normally, I always go for the overcut. It is time to actually do something different. Go into the pits. Be proactive. And I've actually gone for the undercut, which is... I can't remember the last time I actually went for an undercut on someone. And luckily... Well, not luckily. Go Too Fast is actually pitting. We come out just ahead of him. So that could have been very, very bad for me. I could have lost a lot of time there. But luckily, we get out ahead of him. And now we've got to push like absolute hell. It's hammer time on this out lap here. We've got a nice clear track out ahead of me. And now the soft should be still in pretty good condition. But I was expecting to do something of an undercut. So if I could get out ahead of these guys, then I felt I had the pace to pull away. Um, I really did believe that. And no, the pace I was doing in practice, like I have for the last few races, I feel if I did have clean air, uh, I had the edge. On people around me so right now you go see my full outlap and you no know, I'm pushing uh, pretty hard here and um, but I do have one warning so I do have to keep that in mind as well because if you get a penalty in a league race or in any league really and these days because everyone's really competitive it's uh it's really gonna plummet you down uh, the the final results all the end of the race here but you no know, pushing very very hard going into overtake into high so pretty much treating this almost like a quality lap without taking the complete risk and um, you can see there's a car ahead of me of Hawks I was really trying to get in the DRS zone and um, in case or well, I was predicting that Viper and my teammate would pit at the end of this lap but I wanted to make sure if I got out ahead of them then I could get Hawks on the DRS straight off the main straight 
going up past El Rouge onto the main one there. Um, and that would really give me a huge, huge advantage. But the only thing that couldn't work in my favour is that them two, if they didn't fight on this outlap and they just slipstream each other, it is so beneficial, um, as I said in this game, where you just let someone pass, you can sit near ERS, then you overtake them, then they can harvest it whilst the other person can go flat out. So it's going to be very interesting now, as both of them have in fact pitted. So going across here, you can see I've overtaken them on the screen, but coming out of turn one, I haven't gained anything. I've pre I think I gained a tiny amount, but we have not done the undercut. So now I am behind my championship rival and my teammate when there's rain scheduled for the end of this race on one lap, older tires as well. And the Hawks does get out of the way. It gives me a little bit of a squeeze, actually, as Dylan goes down the inside of Viper. So we're in a net P3. And no, this hasn't worked out. The risk has not paid off on this occasion at all. And no, this could be de detrimental to me. Because if it rains, it inverts as I try and go around the outside of Viper. Because being at the back of this train or for this two car train, no, the car in second place and the net second place is always going to have a slipstream on the guy in first. No, I'm not going to be able to get past, and the opportunity is very, very difficult to get past right here. When you're locked in this DRS train, as you see in esports quite often, it's going to be impossible for me to get past. And you can see again, a Viper overtakes him, and this is what I was fearing. I was fearing that I was just going to watch these two guys slipstream each other, and no, I can't get past the lead car. So I have to do something. I can't sit here, otherwise. I'm going to lose out. And if Viper beats me this race, um, you can see by the signs at the beginning that he would actually overtake me in this championship. So I can't afford to do that. I have to beat him this race. Um, and that's what I was thinking right now. Really do have to beat him. But going through this corner, that is my second warning of this race. So one more warning. It is a free second time penalty. And, you know, it. that's not good. That is really not good. And Viper, you could see before... He hasn't got any penalties, and I can confirm he hasn't even got a single warning at this stage in the race. So now, when I need to be aggressive, I have to get past my teammate. I can no longer be aggressive, and um, because if I get one more warning, I get a free second time penalty. So I'm in a very awkward position right now. But I saw this as an opportunity. My teammate goes wide, and I saw this was the perfect opportunity. So I put it up into Rich and overtake, go down the inside of my teammate making us a slight bit of contact going completely flat out for his left hander and this is what i have to do i have to get ahead of him to so go into the bus stop chicane i leave him some room on the inside and we get the move done into p2 and that move was absolutely crucial exactly what i was talking about before i could not be the third car in this train otherwise there was no way that i was going to overtake the second place man unless there was a mistake and that is exactly what I was waiting for and that is exactly what happened as well I needed that to happen and especially since there's going to be rain towards the end of this if we had to pit for intermediates the the lap is very very long round here it could be even worse than Silverstone in that and you can see he's weaving around a little bit so I'm not sure if he's happy about anything at all I, I didn't notice it at the time but that was a move that I had to do and you know we're in a very good position now but Dylan no, he's a very fast driver and he always seems to be he always seems to be able to follow really really closely it's like he's glued to my car and you can see now this is the time i plan to save uh, ers and fuel and you know this is exactly what we need to do in this race we've got a lap of tires we're on two warnings and my strategy now is just to sit behind viper and not let my teammate get past and then hopefully pick him off at the end of this race but one thing you, you're going to have to pay attention to, which we'll allude to in a bit, is we do have a jam pancakes in P4 on soft tyres rapidly approaching us as Viper lags. And Dylan's trying to go down the move on the inside of me, so we leave him some room once again. And you now this battling is not helping us at all. It is really, really not helping us. And the pace at this stage was actually uh, not particularly good um, from all of us. You can see my teammate is so, so close behind me as well. And you can see on the mini-map that Jam Pancakes, along with a couple of others, they're on the soft tyres and they're good to go to the end of the race. And they're, they're lapping about the eight attempts to a second quick as Viper lags once again. And I knew now with P2 
Pancakes actually approaching, who's another rival with my championship. I'm going to have to get a move on. So Viper defends, which is, again, just going to slow us down. I was thinking about around the outside, but I knew, no, it probably wasn't going to work out. So I decided to think a little bit better of it as my teammate is right behind me once again. Now, I knew that I'm going to have to do something here. Otherwise, we're going to be pretty vulnerable um, to the soft runners behind us. But Viper still has not got a penalty. I think we're going to ask Jeff once again. Let's see if he's got a penalty or not. And yet, you can see he hasn't got a penalty. And I can confirm as well at this stage in the race, he didn't even have a warning. So he's got you know, two lifelines. I have zero lifelines left. I can't afford to make any other mistakes right here. As he goes actually out wide here, which really compromises his run going through onto this fat out section. And this has made my teammate uh, get right up behind me. And I'm closing in on him a little bit too quick. So I'm going to put down the fuel and the ERS. But my teammate, I think he always likes to attack at all times. So this has put me in a really, really awkward position. So I have to go to the inside. I wasn't trying to overtake Viper, but block my teammate. And then my teammate still tries to go around the outside, but we just about managed to hold on to P2 here. He has lost some time to jam pancakes behind as well. And I knew now this is the lap where I have to get past Viper. I have to get past him because I felt I had slightly more pace than him as well because apparently he was using quite a lot of ERS and Pancakes is side by side with my teammates. So you can see I've gone into full rich and overtake mode. I have to get the move done now and put some distance between myself and Viper because you know, if I need to break his DRS, I have to do it now. So he doesn't defend. I think he's quite happy for me to actually take the lead at this stage in the race. And Pancakes has gone into P3 as well. We're gonna stay on board here um, because now this is the time I'm really starting to push. I've got a fair amount of ERS to play with, but ERS does get depleted very, very quickly here. And I think Viper is really trying to harvest some ERS. So I saw this as an opportunity to potentially uh, break away from these guys. And you can see going into the end of the first sector and the following up, we did pull out a gap, but Pancakes is going down the inside of ERL Viper. And now it's going to be a straight head to head here and no we need to get a move on we need to get a move on and i don't know if pancakes has a penalty at this stage in the race and i think i'm probably going to check coming out of this corner now here but let's see what happens i don't well i don't think we did check in the end but we've got no we're coming towards the end of lap 19 and pancakes is very very close to me and no, we've actually gapped a little bit to viper and dylan confirming that we do definitely have the pace on these tires but going into turn one we just get complete amount of oversteer and we have lost a position and that was not intentional at all that really really i can promise you was not intentional and that has gifted pancakes the lead here on the soft tire but i wasn't panicking too much because i was quite confident that his tires would probably go off towards the end of the race and he could even actually help me stay ahead of the guys behind me actually provide a little bit of protection to me but I think, again, well, I think we're going to stay on board, actually, for the end of this race now. And hopefully I check what the penalty situation is, because I think even at this stage, I still was not sure um, of what was actually happening. And you can see, I think Jeff is just telling me how about some fuel remaining. But we are scheduled um, to get some rain, actually, pretty soon here. And no, it's crucial that I keep Jam Pancakes, actually, in my DRS zone. Because if he's not in my DRS zone, I'm going to lose out to my main championship rival uh, Viper. So I was really, really trying hard. You can see I'm in full rich. Got quite a bit of fuel left as well, um, which I definitely prefer using more fuel in league races. I find it doesn't slow me down. It's really beneficial. But you can see he's out of that second window now and I'm gonna have to use my ERS. We've started to pull away a little bit from Viper behind, who I think himself is struggling a bit, but we've got some very good straight line speed in this mercedes it is on equal car settings but my setup that i was using i think was very quick and a straight line so we are just about still in that drs and you can see we are eligible for it coming off this corner it's crucial that i get some good traction here still just about within a second almost out of a second window from viper pine trying to get a good exit again and we have to stay in the drs zone if we don't there's only one lap to go here and no again i'm I haven't checked the penalty situation 
but let's see if I am in this DRS zone and I think coming up El Rouge is very very tricky here and yes we are we are just about in the DRS zone again and now he's defending here but I'm just going to try and harvest as much energy as I possibly can and now Viper is right behind me well not right behind me he's a little bit out of the DRS zone and all I need to do is just stay with pancakes as much as I possibly can you can see gaining quite a bit of time in the corners but now the rain has actually started to fall on and no this is not actually benefiting me because on medium tires the harder compound it's going to be harder to generate heat he's on fresher softer tires which will generate much more heat than this on the previous game it was actually vice versa no complete opposite of the harder tire was actually more beneficial but on this one the softer tire will generate more heat so this is not playing into my favor and i have to be careful that i do not lose the drs zone of jam pancakes here and coming off this corner let's see what the gap is going to be on this occasion it is just over a second so we are not going to get the drs zone and i can confirm because i thought i was going to look at it but pancakes does have a three second time penalty as well so i need to stay within three seconds of him and if i'm batting viper then that could really hurt my chances of this but you can see we haven't got the drs zone and viper is right behind me and at this moment in time he's got to overtake me in the championship i have to be this race here so going into turn one i decide to go in deep and actually let him pass and that was done on purpose because i knew that with this DRS zone coming up, that I was not going to be able to stay ahead of him. So going through El Rouge, I'm going to have to get a good line for here. I have a pretty good exit. We're going into Rich and Overtake, and then we have to get this move done. If we don't get this move done, it's a very good chance we're going to lose this race. He tries to squeeze me going into the end of the first sector. Under braking, he still tries to go down the inside, but we managed to maintain it into P2. And now you can see that Pancakes is almost two seconds clear he can quite easily gain a second so we have to stay within three seconds of him otherwise we are going to lose this race and if we won this race and that would be a very very big statement for this championship here so pin it up into high and all i was thinking about now was just no i can't afford to be cautious i have to push as hard as i possibly can but we don't have a lot of drs left i don't think viper is going to put me under some pressure here because um, i do feel we had a little bit more pace on these tires and i'm just pushing as hard as i can let's see what the gap is going to be going into this last sector making sure we don't get a penalty and stuff as well the gap is 2.3 seconds so we're going to use everything that i have remaining in this ers bar and the fuel as well and it's just hoping that i don't lock up into this final chicane and let's see what is going to happen here going into here putting it back down trying to get the maximum traction off here looks like i am just about over in three seconds but you never know in this game and coming off the final corner have we just done the absolute masterclass? and you yes. can see that we have won Come this on. gp from starting fifth place on the grid from letting viper behind well letting him go in the last lap overtaking my teammate when i needed to do it on older tires we have pulled off exactly what i needed to do in this race and uh, i think i'm worn out after talking over that uh, it's <laughs> it's exactly what i needed after a, a quite a bad last couple of races where i felt i deserved a much better result there uh, to have the win here at this track where i find uh, pretty difficult for myself against the odds as well was very very satisfying and all i have to say is that i really hope you enjoyed that one uh, that was one of the best races that i've done we've had some very very good races recently but that was certainly a very very intense one this has really done well for my championship we go into monza which is coming tomorrow night actually um, so in about 24 hours time there will be a league race there and you can see uh, i don't think the standings have updated yet unfortunately but i think i now have about a 12 point lead in the championship over viper so we've extended it and i'm just going to keep pushing to the very end of this season thank you so much for the support of my videos recently it means the world to me and i will catch you very very soon peace